So we've measured Kirby. Once we've got the measurements on the sheet, it then all of these numbers, measurements, they get transferred onto a paper pattern, into a paper pattern. So we start with a blank sheet of paper, true bespoke, um, and we just start marking it all up. So. So we're going to be making the front body now. We've already made the yoke, which goes on the back of the shirt here, and the slope, which is the mark here for putting the collar in. So, yeah. as I say, probably not very entertaining to watch, but it, it is all drafted from scratch. Um, so we've got his body length here. So we can include all the turnings on that. So it can all, once we've got this, because it's the shoulders we really want to concentrate on, because um, everything hangs from the shoulders. So um, yeah, so we start there. So that line there is how we'll make the hem up at the front. So this will all be, that's your center line where the button and button holes go. And this will all be turned in by, by the girls by hand to make up the hem. So we put the slope down here. We'll mark that out. Here. So you, you wouldn't, there's no need to alter that there. So the next step is we look at the drops. So Kirby's got quite sloping shoulders. So from this straight line here, we then mark out the highest point of the shoulder drop. So like everyone, you know, he isn't even, no one is completely even. Um, so we're making the adjustments for the shoulders here. So we get the, the, this is all a cutting pattern. So there's no um, turnings on here. This is all how we cut it. So we put the yoke, we, we put the yoke on to get the front yoke measurement here. So we've got the front yoke measurement. So from the neck point to here, that's the drop that we, was that we were talking about. So that's your, that's that space there and that mark there. So from here, we get the armhole drop, which, you know, quick round figures is normally about a sixth of the chest size. So we do the maths on that, quick round figure. So that brings us to about here. Yeah. So that's where the shirt is under the arm. And then we have a cross chest measurement, which is basically from the narrowest point across here. So we take a measurement for that. So we've got a cross chest measurement here. So we go half of that because we're working on half the fronts. So that will bring us to that point. As you can see, this is where all the work is. I mean, it's not it's probably not great viewing, but you know, that's how it's done on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, um, we draft the pattern completely from scratch. There's no blocks or anything. So <clears throat> then we kind of, we need to make a mark for where it finishes. So depends what type of fitting shirt the customer wants. So, you know, we want something that's practical rather than, um, you know, too tight or too big. So uh, Kirby's nice and slim. Um, so we want it to be, you know, kind of a medium fit shirt. So we, we'll, get, we'll take a ch ch chest measure, add on an allowance to it, including the turnings, and then mark it on here. So from years of cutting, you'll kind of understand 
what you need to add on to get like a fuller cut, a medium cut, or a much, much um, slimmer cut. Um, so it's just all um, um, experience, really. Yeah, that's what it is. So working it out, 45. It's 22 and a half. That makes it in there. So you've got your measurement. So from the centre line again, you want to come out here. And out here. So another exciting straight line for the cameras for you. Yeah. So it's starting to take shape anyway. So you can see we've got the, the semblance of a sort of front body here, hem, center hem, front yoke. So this, this area here, all these lines here, so that's the, the front here. This is how you're gonna draft your armhole from here. And there's no pattern for it or anything like that. It is just freehand. So, you know, you then just mark that out using those reference points, the cross chest and the, the, the front yoke. Freehand. Yeah. And people always sort of say, well, how can that kind of, there must be a sort of, you know, it's experience, you get a feel for it and you, with the, with the pencils, you know, you can kind of feel that it's got a nice sweep to it, it's got a nice shape to it. Ideally, dependent on measurements, you want, when the back and the front are together, the armholes, you want a kind of nice kind of horseshoe shape, you know, but sometimes that goes out the window, someone's like barrel chested or, or something, you might have to add a little bit more on here so they have a bit more room through that area. But yeah, I mean, that's the kind of, the bespoke kind of, um, aspect of it. it is all freehand and, and the feel of it really and when you're measuring someone you can kind of feel things on the shoulder or in the arms or under the chest so yeah so yeah once we've kind of we've done that we then know that they, you know we haven't got even shoulders so there's a half inch difference so I'll probably mark up the half inch difference on here. Just to remind myself again, you know, that I've got to do it as well. So now we, I mean, I'm quite happy with the armhole shape, you know, I've been doing it a long time already. So, you know, you, you can kind of get the feel to it, but sometimes you might have to just kind of tart it up a little bit just to get it looking a bit more neater and have that nice kind of flow to it as well so you know so little nick marks the nick here which tells the ladies when they're making it you know that's where we want the, the to put the slope here yeah so that they'll mark it out and then cut it out there And another nick is for the centre of the hem, as we discussed. So that tells them where we want the centre line to be. Right. So now we're going to cut the armhole, the front armhole out. So, yeah. and again, even when you're cutting it out as well, you might change it a little bit on that because you can feel it as you're coming round. So you'll probably notice that there's some pencil marks left on there because you haven't followed it completely to the law because you, it felt a little bit better as you were cutting it out. So, um, yeah, so we're done on that.
All right. So we've now got the front body. Going back to what we spoke about with the left and right shoulders. Now we've made a bit of room. I'll then mark out. You know, the drops. So he's lower on the right hand side. So your top one is your left, the bottom one, the lower one is your right. And then we have to come back and do the same on here again. So we have to freehand, you know, that right armhole drop there for you. And you're not, you're not cutting that out. You'll brad all that, you know, marks on there. So it's all on the paper pattern. Yeah. So you've got your right, your left and your right all marked on there. And when you come to cut it out on the, on the fabric, you'll, you'll pencil it through and then you'll know that's my right, that's my left on there. So that's the front body. So you can see exactly where, you know, it's starting to take shape and where that would go. That's your center line there. So from the, from the front, another bit of paper, more boring straight lines. Um, So you, it's the same format, you, you, you draw a square there and you, you line it. So from your front body, you line up your center hem with that line, which is gonna be the center of the back there. So you're fundamentally just marking out the same here. Yeah, so that's gonna give you your back body. So the yoke again, the slope again, the yoke again, sorry, comes back into play. So that's how it's gonna be made, like that. And then what we do is fold it over here. So once you fold it over, this will give you where your, your the top of your back shoulder will finish is here. here as well yeah so that's the that's the yoke that's the, the bottom of it so we know that that's going to go on there right so so you've got your marks here another bit of freehand more of the bespoke side of it you know you need to do your back armhole now you want that nice horseshoe shape but you also want to give a little bit more room through here so it gives a bit of movement yeah but not not too flat but so again another three free hand effort and that's yeah I, I, so i'll be happy with that yeah yeah done it a few times now so i'll i'll i'm pretty confident that that'd be all right but then i'll show you again in a minute so that's fundamentally all marked out there if you notice when i folded it over we it gave us the yeah, we folded it over and it's given you the back shoulder mark here and it's also given you a mark there where when it's made up, that will want to finish there. So we've got all the marks in place of where we need to be. So what we need to do now is just kind of tally up our marks here. Just gonna spin this around. Actually might give you a better angle. Some people, I, you know, this is the kind of, the beauty, the annoyance of kind of bespoke. You know, some people could mark it out that way. I have to turn it over, which is almost like a left-hand way of, of doing it. Not important, but 
it's just little bits and pieces how different how people work differently. So this is your back shoulder here. Another bit of freehand on there. So that's your kind of your back body pretty much done. So again, going back to what we were talking about, if you can, I don't know if you can see that a bit better there, but that's that kind of horseshoe shape that we wanted to generate within the armholes there. Yeah. So not bad. Yeah. <laughs> so another measurement that we take is a natural waist measurement. So that kind of tells us where the narrowing, where we've taken a waist measurement, it tells us where that narrowing happens. Because nine times out of 10, most people are kind of, you know, narrower through the waist than they are through the chest. So again, grab the yoke, marry it up with the back, check our natural waist measurement, which is here. So now we're going to go for a, a gusset measurement here in the shirt. So where the, the back meets the front, there's always a little kind of tab in there to shore it up. So we don't take a measurement for this, but if someone's tall, you know that you need to make it a bit longer. If they're a sort of average height, you're thinking, well, you know, and how short or long the body is of the pattern, you kind of think, well, okay, we need it to be about sort of 16 inches down from the bottom of the armhole. So that's where you kind of, your gusset and your hip measurement is from there. So again, another straight line to work from. So you kind of, you look at what the difference between your, your chest and waist is. Again, so one and a half inches. So this, you do all the maths on the paper here. So, so two and a half, two and three quarters, one and three eighths. So we know that we want to we want to give a nice bit of waist in for Kirby because he's, he is nice and slim. So we take a little. I would take a little bit extra out of the um, of the, of the waist and the hips just to do that. So, yeah. So we know from that straight edge there how much we need to reduce it to give a nice kind of silhouette to the shirt. So that's our mark there. And again, through the hips, we want to keep it a little bit neater through there. So we'll take a little bit more at the hips there. So we've got the reference points for where we need to be for the for the waist and the hips. So I'll just quickly, not roughly, sorry, just mark that out. That gives me a bit of a guide where I need to be. So me, I'm just going to move it around. I don't know why, it just, it's easier for me to mark it that way. So we know we need to kind of hit this point. So this is just under the arm here. If you kind of feel there yourself, you can feel that's naturally where we kind of shape like that a little bit. So instead of it being a straight line, I tend to just kind of, just put a little bit of a shape through there. Come up straighter. Instead, you don't want a straight line on, on, the, on the waist measurement, so we kind of curve it to the point of the waist. Yeah. And then we know that we need to come down through here and hit that, that hip mark. And sometimes when I'm doing that, it kind of, I can see and, and feel 
it looks a bit too bulbous and that means it's going to kick out on the hips. So I then try and just kind of shape it up you know, to what I feel is going to be like a nice shape, nice silhouette when it's all put together. All freehand, you know, there's no kind of drafts for it. And then we mark out the tail here, like so, like that. If, you know, sometimes when you've got bigger, big, bigger gentlemen, you know, um, to accommodate through the stomach area, you have to make it a bit bigger through there. There's no shaping, yeah. But then that in turn makes the hips quite big. So you would change the shape of that to do what we call an American tail. So it takes a bit more of that excess fabric out of there, or I do anyway. So yeah, that, that gives us the back body. And again, arm, back arm hole, same as the front one. You'll feel it a little bit more as you're cutting it. I know my arm's probably in the way, but you know, it steadies it up, but you can kind of feel it as you're going round. And the same here as well, when you're, when you're doing this shaping for, for, for your body, you'll start doing it, but you'll feel it a bit better as you're cutting it. And you probably won't obey the lines that you've drawn, but that's okay. You, you kind of you want it to be that way. And then we'll come all the way around. Okay. And that's giving us a nice kind of shape you know, for the bodies. So you can see from the chest, that little that little bow that you want for the lats through there and through the waist. So yeah, little nick here for where the gussets are going, tells the girls where they need to put it. Um, Again, we do the same. We'd mark out the left and right shoulders on here and, and prick it through um, to know our marks. Once that's done, we then lay that on, on there. Center of the the center back line matches up with the center of the front hem, as we discussed. And then you've got, a, you just literally just follow that around. So your, your, your shaping is the same front and the back. Well, that's how I do it anyway, you know, for various reasons, but you know, there's less kind of pull and drag on it, I think, when you do it that way. So they go together quite neatly. Um, yeah. And again, you would just cut that out. I always think when, once you mark this on your front body, it, with with some, with with luck, you kind of think you'd be happy with that shape, thinking, yeah, that that's a nice. It's going to give him a nice bit of shape through the body and a nice silhouette all the way through. And I think it always looks a bit better. I don't know why, probably wrong, but once you've marked it on here, you're thinking, yeah, I'm I'm happy with that. So yeah, so there you are, your, your, your front and your back bodies, which are the fundamental parts of the shirt with the yoke and the slope there. So we've done, we, we, we've done the body patterns, we've taken all the measurements, now we're gonna make the sleeve. Straight line, mark it out with the, with the bridle as well so you're able to fold it here. So you get a sleeve length. 
Again, another square line, always interesting on camera. So it's folded in half. So you get a sleeve. You know what you need to make your sleeve. So you then mark out that um, length up there. So top end is going to be the sleeve head that goes into the armhole that we discussed and the bottom end is the wrist end. So the wrist end mark is there. You've got a, you've got a measurement for how big the sleeve head needs to be to go in there. Again, lots of mark. Again, it's all done by freehand. So you know what what's a what, what circumference your sleeve head is. So you come to half of that mark, which is there. You've got your wrist end mark there. Right. So again, it's all freehand. So from the top of the sleeve to, to the bottom of the sleeve head to the armhole, that becomes another freehand drawing there. So what we've just drawn there is the, is the back of the, of the sleeve head. So we now need to make, make another mark for the front of the sleeve head there. So that needs to be a bit more shaped because you want to take a bit more out of there uh, to make it look a bit neater. You probably can't see that. So again, another three freehand effort. So again, so you've got your front and the back armhole there, all marked out. You also want to shape this this seam here. So, you know, a bit more room all the way up to the elbow. And then shape it out a little bit so it gives it a bit more of a kind of silhouette through the arm. So then we are, we are cutting. And as per the other bits that we've done on the front and the back, you can kind of feel, you know, where, what you're, whether what you're doing is correct or it's going to, it, it looks nice or it feels nice when you're cutting it out. So nine times out of ten, you'll get a better result cutting it than what you actually drew out. So we've got that. We open it up. Have a quick look, thinking, yeah, not a bad shape. And then you do the front armhole. And again, you'll feel that it's the correct shape for you when you've done it. So yeah, and then that kind of gives you the sleeve pattern there. Okay. So we've got the kind of fundamentals done of, of the shirt there. The next step would be the cuff pattern. Straight, straight forward, you know, we've got the measurement. We add all the, all the turnings and what we need to do onto it. So that needs to be there. And, you know, nine times out of 10, people wear watches or eye watches or the sports watches. So we have to make one cuff bigger than the other. So we mark the largest cuff out first of all. And then that's the largest cuff and then we'll also make a mark for where The shorter one is the smaller one. So we've got our left and rights, like on the on the front, marked out on there. 
then if it's kind of square, you keep it square, or if it's mitered, you then you make you mitre it on the edge like that. And again, you would just cut that out. So you've done one, one edge of the cuff with either the, the mitre or the round. What I always do is just move it over like that, end to end. So you then know that you're gonna get the same shape on the other side. Like that. So then your kind of cuff pattern is there so that would go as your as your cuff like that yeah. so the last one probably the most important one sometimes people would say is the collar so when you're when you're measuring someone doing the fitting and for the for the sample we, we've got a set of collars which we shot which we use as a guide for people so we say well this is a semi cut away we look at that Again, yeah, I like that. But can we make it a bit longer, shorter, more cutaway, less cutaway? So it's just a starting point um, that we use. Um, so then what we can do is, again, from scratch, mark it out, get a copy of the pattern that we looked at together. So right, okay, that we know it needs to be like a 15 and a half collar. We make the allowances on there. So we know that it needs to be that size, which is fine. So this is the band. So this is the bottom part here. So we mark that out. Like that. Little nick where the, the top goes into the band, so the girls know what to do. And again, so you think, well, okay, we know that we want this collar shape, but we want it to be a little bit deeper. So you, you add on the deepness that you want, you might want to shape it a bit differently to spring it down, to sit down lower or spring it up to do the other way. So the band is there. The top, which is this part here. So you mark out the initial one like that for you. Think, right, okay, we wanted that to be a little bit deeper, so we move it down deeper. And say, so, okay, we know that you wanted it to be a bit more cut back, a little bit more spread. So we make the mark. So we've done that, we check the color the length of the collar point, we're happy with that. Sometimes you might need to, you know, again, it's all freehand, but you know, you think what, so it's got either some prominent uh, collar bones or something like that. So we might need to take a little bit more out or he wants it to be a little bit more substantial. So we'll add a bit on. And again, by feel, you kind of know what you want to do there. And, and that's it, you kind of, your color patterns They're done. So there we go, making sure that you haven't thrown any of the collar pattern away that you've just made, because I've done that before. 
So you've got your band, this part here, and the top, this part here. This is all cutting pattern. And that's how it would kind of go together like that. When it's finished, it will be... That's another thing we do as well. If you want to check to see if you've got enough spread on it or what it's going to look like as a colour, you can just kind of do that and it gives you a rough idea of the spread and the shape of the colour and how it's roughly going to look and if you're happy with it. So, yeah, that, that's that's pretty much it. We're, so we've got the... We've got the front. We have the back. And the sleeves. Collar, cuffs, yoke and slope. So once we've kind of got all that, we would then weight it down and onto the paper, onto the onto the fabric, but then pencil this all on. Yeah. And then once it's penciled on, so the, the front and back will be cut separately, the sleeves will be cut separately, and then you'll have different parts from what you've cut out to get the the collars, cuffs and the yokes out of all the different pieces. So we'll then mark it all up on the on the fabric and then cut out, ready for the girls to make ready for a fitting um, from there. We send all the bundles down here wrapped up with a ticket which, which shows all the instructions mm -hmm. on there. And then this workshop is doing 100% of the work on premises by a small team of incredibly talented uh, shirt makers. Where, where these lines are is where the stitch has to go so it'll fall into place. 